Hello my friends, Sean Ferrick here for Trek Culture, and today's video is brought to you by Star Trek Fleet Command. Hooray! More on that now in a second. Ranking the various Star Trek pilots is tricky. And it's now something that has to be done with slightly more regularity. How does one define a pilot episode? Does a man trap count? As it was broadcast first. Does Runway fit in, or do we count the short treks as part of their respective series? Arguably, Q&A and Ask Not could be seen as pilots for Strange New Worlds. In the end though, this video focuses on the main televised series and their pilots. A future list may expand on, but for now, Where No Man Has Gone Before will be the pilot in question for James R. Kirk. Although, following that logic, perhaps a man trap is the pilot for James T. Kirk. Ranking the newest pilots against the older ones may seem somewhat unfair. There is no competition when one compares the stunning visuals of the Vulcan Hello against the less stunning visuals of the Cage. And yet, it's surprisingly easy to compare them all to each other. Because for all the arguing online, they are all Star Trek. With that in mind then, I'm Ellie with Trek Culture, ranking Star Trek pilots from every series from worst to best. I want to take a quick second to thank Star Trek Fleet Command for sponsoring this video. Star Trek Fleet Command is a free-to-play game that's available on iOS and Android. Use my link in the description of this video to grab your copy now. It allows you to craft your own starship. You can build alliances. You can build bases. You can even put together your own crew of legacy characters. We've got Kirk, we've got Spock, we've got Picard, we've got Worf. You could also be a freelancer which, if you're like me, kind of suits you perfectly because I just want to get out there, do whatever the heck I want, and I don't follow no rules because I'm a bad boy like that. If you're a bad boy like me, use the link in the description of this video to get your own copy of Star Trek Fleet Command. Thanks so much again for sponsoring this video. Much appreciated. Number 11, Encounter at Farpoint. With the success of the movies kicking Star Trek into warp speed, it was time for the franchise to return to its roots. Star Trek The Next Generation was conceived as a continuation of the show, and to say that it was met initially with lukewarm reactions is underselling it. The original cast were not entirely on board to begin with. George Takai, James Duhan, and even DeForest Kelly, the seemingly nicest man who ever lived, were not thrilled to hear that they were being replaced in the eyes of Trekkies everywhere. Kelly was the first to come around, appearing in the pilot in one of the most heartwarming scenes of the next generation's seven year run. The rest of the cast eventually came around, although Encounter at Farpoint is very rarely voted by fans as the best episode of the show. While there is a lot to like, the visuals and the introduction of Q serve as highlights for the premiere, it suffered from that common ailment of not quite knowing what it is as it came out the door. Although it's safe to say, as time went on, the next generation did okay. Number 10. Beyond the Farthest Star this episode might come as a surprise to viewers who may not be overly familiar with Star Trek's first animated series. It has thrills and chills as the Enterprise is trapped in the gravity well of a dead star, where they encounter a ship that has been trapped there for 300 million years. On board this ship is a malevolent being intent on escaping and using the Enterprise to do it. This episode has a lot going for it. The cast returns to play the characters they've originated and the story itself is gripping and intriguing. The episode is let down by the animation and dialogue, which has a whiff of a studio that's still learning how to adapt to the medium. But these are small complaints. Star Trek was back and ready to keep on travelling to strange new worlds, keeping the show alive while the convention circuit began to really take off. Number 9. Where No Man Has Gone Before The second pilot of Star Trek acts as a spiritual sequel to The Cage, but it does reflect what Star Trek's first incarnation would embody best. It has action, it has mystery, and it has Kirk's shirt being almost completely torn off. If anything, Where No Man Has Gone Before is the epitome of Star Trek's first 20 years summed up in an hour. Spock was now the cold Vulcan that we could come to know and love, as opposed to the more emotional man of the cage. He had also received a promotion, ousting Barrett's number one to the position of first officer. We got an iconic scene 
where James R. Kirk faces off against the superhuman Gary Mitchell, who was recently name-dropped in Lower Decks. And it also features the only appearance of the original series Phaser Rifle, a very solid start to what would become Star Trek The Original Series. Number 8. Lost and Found Lost and Found has the task of introducing not only established fans of the franchise to an entirely new frontier to boldly enter, but also has to extend that welcome to a new, younger audience. So does it manage to quite do that? Well, arguably yes. The visuals are a spectacular treat and the voice acting is on point from all and sundry. Those hoping for an easter egg heavy opening might leave a little disappointed, but that's effectively the point. Star Trek Prodigy makes a mission statement out of creating something new, yet managing to exist in the wider world. The inclusion of a solitary Kazon is enough for seasoned Trekkies to know that we're located in the Delta Quadrant, without anything else being overly telegraphed. The design of the USS Protostar is an absolute treat, while the rapidly cobbled together crew seem to have genuine chemistry. The main villain of the pilot, Dreadnought, may be Star Trek's take on General Grievous, but is effective nonetheless. That character's appearance in the pilot's closing moments pays off without being the sole point of the story. It may not have the gravitas of some of the other entries on this list, but it is a strong start for Star Trek Prodigy, and a whole new generation of fans. Number 7. The Cage It is no secret that here at What Culture Towers, we are big fans of the very first pilot of Star Trek, named The Cage on release. It's an hour of what Star Trek would come to be known for. Cerebral exploration of their dealings with alien races, action, and equality across genders and species. Starring Jeffrey Hunter as Captain Pike, Leonard Nimoy, and Majel Barrett, with guest star Susan Oliver as Vina, this show would take viewers on a special journey into the heart of the unknown, serving as the perfect introduction as to what Star Trek would become. However, it failed to sufficiently impress the network. They felt that while there was a good idea and good imagination here, the episode itself was too cerebral and that it would fail to grab viewers. They did however decide that there was something there worth saving. Roddenberry was given some notes and told to write a new pilot. The notes were to drop the woman from the bridge, lose the satanic looking fellow, and punch up the action a bit. At least one of those notes was ignored. And for the love of Spock, we thank him. Number 6. The Vulcan Hello Star Trek Discovery has been dividing fans since the first news broke that another prequel was on the way. The first images of the show confused fans as to where and when it would be set. If, like the producers claimed, it was to be set before Kirk and Spock, why then did the technology look so modernised? What on earth were those demon-looking creatures that seemed to be speaking Klingon and Spock has a sister now? Discovery dared to do something new with the Vulcan Hello. It opened on the Klingons planning to unite to fight the Federation, then focuses on Michael Burnham and her disastrous attempt to save the lives of her ship and crew. The episode is beautiful. The effects team took every dollar they were thrown and handed it back to the audience in every shot of the episode. Everything is rendered to look so realistic that the ho-hum graphics of some of Enterprise are immediately forgotten. The pilot does stumble though. It's told at a breakneck pace, screaming through the plot rather than offering the audience any time to swallow what's happening. We're given compelling characters with no time to be compelled. The second pilot comes two episodes later, though Discovery does ask a lot of its audiences in the first season. As pilots go, it's a tough one to follow. Number 5. Second Contact it might seem a bit mean to say this, but nobody expected Star Trek Lower Decks to be great. Good, certainly. It had some excellent talent lined up for behind the scenes, and the show was thankfully not hindered by the lockdown, with actors able to record remotely. At best, some hoped this would be a fun addition to the franchise. It has become so much more. While there are moments of comedy that seem more at place in Rick and Morty, the show is treating the franchise not just with respect, but with reverence. In the pilot, we are greeted with a shot of Space Dock, followed by the surprisingly lovely USS Cerritos. 
The animation is superb and the voice talent nails it. The show is, to quote a famous Trek culture voice, piss funny. It absolutely smashes the comedy while honouring what came before. The pilot closes by name dropping not just Kirk and his crew, but also Gary Mitchell, who hasn't been heard from since 1966. Yet none of it feels tacked on. And the relationships established seem as real as any we've seen before. The future of Star Trek seems to be in good hands at the moment, and as Trekkies, that's a good place for us to be. Number 4. Remembrance For that image alone, Star Trek Picard could have done nothing else and still made its way into the hearts of audiences. However, and thankfully, it did a lot more than that. The opening shot, similar to Discovery in its stunning use of visuals, becomes a scene between John Luke and Data, offering us a hint of what was to come in the first season of Star Trek Picard. This was not going to be a rehash of The Next Generation, and many people found that jarring. Captain Picard was always the most reasoned and calming force, yet here he is, fighting with a reporter, being blown backwards by explosions, and, for all intents and purposes, showing his age. And that is exactly the point. Many of us would have loved The Next Generation Season 8, but that was never what was on the table. There is both action and moments of calm here, with enough to hook new viewers while offering tidbits to the returning viewers. The closing shot of the episode, revealing the immensity of the Borg Cube, stands out as one of the moments of the season, and in fact Trek in general, from the last 20 years. Remembrance was an excellent pilot for what would become a mixed bag of a season. Number 3. Broken Bow to be fair, the franchise was headed into the fatigue that would put it on ice for several years when Enterprise, later retconned to be named Star Trek Enterprise, was conceived. The idea of a prequel series had been bandied about for almost a decade, with the idea of doing a movie on Kirk and Spock at the Academy doing the rounds for a while. With the completion of Voyager, Rick Berman and Brannon Braga created Enterprise, a series about the first ship named Enterprise. It came out at entirely the wrong time. The pilot Broken Bow was quite an interesting episode, but suffered from a sense of the audience having seen it all before. The visuals, while very nice, were also still slightly jarring. Enterprise is the first series to rely entirely on CGI to depict the ship. There were canon and continuity issues from the start, a theme that is yet to go away from Star Trek, and this served to put audiences off. While the pilot does the necessaries of introducing the crew and the ship, the timing of it all, just after 9-11, was against it. It does seem to be having a second life in recent years, something that is very welcome to fans of the show. Number 2. Caretaker Star Trek's first series to be led by a female captain, Voyager broke the mould on its arrival. The ship, beautifully designed by Rick Sternback, was hurled into the Delta Quadrant in a new-ish take on seeking out strange new worlds and civilizations. Caretaker is an excellent opener to the series. The action kicks off almost immediately with the Marquis on the run from the Cardassians, only to end up on the wrong side of the Badlands. After a welcome stop at Deep Space Nine, Voyager launches and finds itself thrown to the Delta Quadrant by the Caretaker, a powerful being who is trying to save the Ocampa a people he inadvertently devastated. The series' villain, the Kazon, are introduced, as well as Neelix and Kess, the first friends that the crew makes on the far side of the galaxy. Caretaker is a strong opener for the show and is up there with Emissary for Best Pilots of Star Trek. It knows when to hit, when to hold back, and when to show off some gorgeous visuals. Star Trek Voyager had arrived and it looked like it was going to be a good one. Number 1. Emissary Star Trek's Deep Space Nine burst onto screens in 1992, and although it started slow in the ratings, it's now enjoying its long-awaited status of some of the best Star Trek ever made. The pilot Emissary is quite possibly the most re-watchable of all the pilot episodes on this list. It, unlike many of the others, was instantly sure of what it was going to be. This was a story about a lonely facility out in the wilds of the Alpha Quadrant, 
with a crew who not only had conflict with each other, they outright disliked each other for the first year. Welcome characters returned like Chief O'Brien, while Avery Brooks as Commander Sisko offered what is potentially the best single performance of any leading cast member in a pilot of Star Trek. This was a new journey, albeit one where the adventures came to them. The greatest villain of Star Trek, Gul Dukat, was introduced in the pilot as well, meaning that in a single stroke we were offered some of the best characters to be created for Star Trek. There is no understating just how good Star Trek Deep Space Nine is all wrapped up in its excellent pilot. And there you have it, every Star Trek pilot ranked from worst to best. If your ranking is different, then please let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. You can also head over to Twitter to follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with Trek Culture. I hope you have a wonderful day, and remember to boldly go where no one has gone before.